The following video will point out some things in Canva that some people prefer not to be aware of. If you do not want to know, skip this video. Thank you. Do you have any other questions for me? You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! <laughs> yes, it's that time of the year where we have to talk about Canva again. Hello and welcome back to my channel everybody. My name is Marina from Marina Art Design. And yes, the warning at the beginning of this video is unfortunately real. So you can understand the problem we have here. I'm going to first tell you something that happened to me yesterday at the local store. So let me paint you a picture. So this is, let's draw it here. This is the local store building and this is the entrance point. And once you enter here, on the right side you have a bakery section and all the products are behind glass doors and here you have a section where you need to take gloves and put the gloves on so you can take uh, the products and it is basically a self self service now outside you have this section here that is the toilet and it has a huge big door that yesterday were open and they are big because they need to allow wheelchairs to go uh, through inside. Now in this area here, it's enclosed area, but in this area here you have men's section and then here you have women's section and here you have disabled section. And outside here is the area where you pick up the trolleys or the cart, however you call this. So if I'm here and I'm looking for coins to take the trolleys, I have the clear straight view into what's happening here. So I can hear a man pissing inside in the toilet. And then after a couple of seconds, maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, he comes outside, straight, goes straight out. And then he sneezes and coughs into his palms, snorts, so to speak, and rubs his hands and walks into the store. Okay, so that's the situation that we have. So he was inside doing, you know what? He came straight out, coughed in his hand, snorted in his hand, rubbed his hand together, and now he and he entered uh, the store. I'm behind him with the trolley. And we both go to this bakery section. Now I stop here to get gloves while he opens the glass doors and he starts picking out the bread he likes by moving others around with his bare hands. And then he goes to croissant section, these ones here, and then he picks the croissants again. And then he moves to donut section, and then he's picking up the donuts. Again, moving them around. Because the price of the product is per item. So if you find bigger one, of course, you are paying the same price. So this is my conundrum now. Please write down below in the comments, what should I do? I have seen this and now I have the knowledge that the bread, croissant and donuts have urine and saliva and who knows what on them. You are stepping into this store. Do you want to know or would you like to live blissfully unaware that you are eating bread with piss on it. What if you already bought it? You ate it. Would you like to know then? Please comment down below. This is because I have a problem and I want you to help me solve my problem to become a better person. Because what is happening for past couple of months and maybe even longer on Facebook is either somebody is selling piss on things or somebody is buying things that have piss on them and when i see that i point it out i openly say hey 
this has piss on it. Don't eat it. Or you ate this, but it had piss on it. And I'm the bad guy. I'm that guy because people do not want to know this. People, some people do not want to know this. So I'm asking you a question from this perspective. If you, if there is a chance that you eat something that has piss on it, would you like to know? Would you like me to tell you and prevent you from doing that? And if it's already happened, do you want me to tell you? Or do you want me to just keep my mouth shut, live my own life, uh, let you do whatever you're going to do? Let's say this situation, in this situation particularly, who is responsible? Is the store responsible for selling you pastry products with pee and saliva on them? So Kanma is the store. Nothing mentioned in this video is 100% completely Kanma's fault. It only becomes Kanma's fault if you tell them pastry has piss on it and they ignore it and continue to sell it. Canva shared the rules. On multiple occasions, you have warning to use gloves and people are violating the rules over and under and sideways in all possible ways. Let's say you have a party this afternoon and you want to make sandwiches. You already finished making them. It's done. Party is about to start. You have a lot of things depending on this party. On TV, there is a report that one store in your area sold bread with pee on it or in it and they will now share which one after the commercials do you wait to hear the full report or do you just turn off the tv and if you are a buyer coming to this party would you like to know sandwiches you are being served have pee on it so in this video i'm going to show you some products or illustrations in Canva store that have P on them. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is to get these items with P on them into the Canva without Canva knowing anything about it. So even if you are not aware that you are breaking Canva, Canva's rules or you are knowingly violating Canva rules because everyone is doing it, freedom to break the rules comes from the fact Canva is not suing anyone. So from everybody's perspective, you are all safe. But there is a growing issue that is happening in Canva internally that could affect your Etsy store, your KDP account, your POD business, or any other business where you might be using Canva graphics or photos or any elements in Canva library. So let's scroll down. Let me switch to this one. So these are Canva Pro elements. So if I click on them and go here, you can see the Canva Pro. Now, there is also something very interesting with these particular elements. You see here they have a crown next to them. They are Canva Pro elements, but you can do absolutely whatever you want with them. No restrictions whatsoever. You can completely ignore all the Canva rules, all the Canva terms, everything you can completely ignore that you can use them as standalone you don't have to overlap them you can sell them like this no restrictions whatsoever now pro elements are normally very restricted in canva rules when it comes how you can use them so what makes these elements here so special in order to understand the problem we first need to understand where are Canva illustrations coming from? So where is this, this image? What is the origin of this image? Origin of this image and origin of this image and all the images that you see here. So let's, I don't know, uh, B. Where are all these images coming from? Who owns copyright over Canva elements? Let's go to the next page. We have a cloud here and we have a bunch of hearts. Who owns copyright over these images, these graphic clip arts? Now, these are all Canva elements. The way you can know it's Canva element, but because if you go here and click on info, you will get info. And let's see who owns them. 
It says here, by Marina Art Design, from Marina Art Design. And they are free if you have pro subscription. You can use them for your private personal projects, not commercial projects, if you have Canva Pro subscription. But these images here, this cloud here, belongs to me. I own it, I draw it, I created it, I uploaded it to my Canva store as a pro image. So I have the copyright over this cloud. And if at any point in future I decide that I do not, I no longer want my image to be part of Canva library, I can just go to my Canva store and delete it from the library. Now, what if you already use this in design and then I delete my, as an artist, I delete my image, I delete my heart. This heart will disappear from your design, so you will no longer be able to use it. But as long as it was in Canva library, you can use it by following, of course, Canva rules. Every single image that you see here, every photo, every graphic, every illustration that you see here is uploaded into Canva by either, by either individual artist who drew, created them as part of Canva Element Creator program. So it is a Canva Element Creator program or by in-house Canva designers. Canva usually use in-house designers when there is a need for specific element and they do not have it in the library. So that is a condition where they would use in-house Canva designers. But most of these elements, they belong to somebody. They belong to a real person, a real artist that has no connections with Canva other than his member of Canva Element Creator Program. So what that means is that if you use my cloud and if you use my heart or use any of my images, if you use any of my images, once you export them, so not just by adding them, so not just by adding them into your page, once you export this as PNG, PDF, it doesn't matter. Once you export this with my pro element, I'm going to get paid. Yes, it's pennies but I get paid. So it is a benefit to an artist to have multiple wide range elements inside Canva store to get more money. And how do you find the store of individuals? So let's, I'm going just going to randomly click. I don't close my eyes because I don't want you to think, okay, how are you going to know that I closed my eyes? Okay, but I close my eyes and I'm just going to click randomly on something. Okay, so what is this? So I have a collection of three Bs. Let's see info. It is free for Canva Pro. So it is a pro element. It is uploaded by the artist that choose to name his store green color. Strange name, but that's the name. Green color. So now you see all these images here belong to this artist. So this artist, Canva creator, he uploaded all his artwork into his store. So let's search this artist. So let's copy his name and put that into Google search. And we see here, when you scroll down, you will see that it has his Canva store. Let's click on that. And there you have it. He has a banner, so that's a good sign. It takes a little bit of effort to decorate your Canva store. So the, the banner is already a good sign. He has icon uploaded as well, also a good sign. Let's see about section. About section is empty, so that's, that's okay. He just didn't type anything inside. And now you can also see like this, all the images he uploaded into his Canva store. Now, how can you uh, find this store if it's not available in Google search? So this is the link that you need to type in. So uh, canva.com slash p slash name of the artist. So in my case, if I go here, if I delete Sergio and type Marina Art Design, you're going to get my store here. As you can see, I have banner, I have my logo. 
And I also added my about section, the links to my website and stuff like that. And now here you can see my elements. I didn't upload much of elements here. I was just testing the mazes and hearts and clouds because I needed them for my project and there was nothing available in Canva for me to use. So that is why basically why I uploaded into Canva system. But that is how you find the artist behind the image that you are using. Let's continue. Next question, who can become a Canva creator? Now this is a tricky one. Anyone can apply to be Canva element creator. Anyone can apply and then you wait for the reply. A reply can take weeks, months, years. So it can be who knows how long, but that's it. That is how you become Canva creator. You apply and then you wait and if you come if, if they approve you approve you and then if they don't approve you you can just apply again so it's a procedure it's different from template creators so in order to become canva template creator it is more strict and you have you need to have portfolio to apply here but also of course you can fake your portfolio and apply here so uh, that's also another questionable thing now, this is an example of my elements. This is an example what you can do with my elements or any other elements that you see in Canva. One of the reasons why I, I, I tested the upload of mazes into Canva as an element is because if you search for mazes in Canva, let's search for mazes in Canva, maze, you can find a lot of mazes here. But the problem I had with the maze, let's say, um, let's start new design let's import this one okay you have you see you have only black color let's change it to red and that's it so whoever created this maze and uploaded it into canva he only uploaded the maze there is no solution and plus who's going to find a matching solution to this element so what i wanted to do what i wanted to try so let me delete this one is this is my maze here what i did is i uploaded the maze with the solution path and now the logic behind my logic is let's say you are a canva subscriber and you want to add this maze into your uh, template design that you want to sell or whatever what you can do here is because I applied unique color to the solution path. What you can do is click on the red, make it white. And you see now you have a maze and solution is you just pick a color for solution path. So in one image you have a maze and you also have a solution of that maze. So that is what I did differently from all the other uh, creators in canva so all the other creators they just uploaded one singular file with no solution part while i uploaded uh, the version that is one image but it has a solution part and you can remove it by just changing the color of the solution line so that is something that i did i'm testing the system the same as you because i'm also a artist designer but i'm also canva user so let's continue is there a review process for canva creators content so when i upload all of these elements is someone actually checking is someone actually looking at them and the answer is no it will be literally impossible that canva has a team of people checking every single image that is uploaded into canva library through canva uh, creator system there, there are guidelines, what you can upload and what you cannot upload into the system. And there is automatic rejection system. So if system detects that something is wrong with your image, it's going to automatically reject it. But that's it. Other than that, there is nothing that is checking uh, the images that are being imported into Canva library. Now, if we look at the rules for Canva creators, for rules for Canva creators, it clearly states in the rules that any and all stock media, so anything that you submit to Canva must be your own original work or you have all rights 
licenses, contents, consents and releases that are necessary. This usually means for photos. So if you are uploading photos with people inside Canva, you need to make sure that you have their permission to be in the photo and that the photo can be used commercially. And of course, you have those uh, typical restrictions when it comes to people in photos. You cannot use those, that for those photos for to represent them like they are doing some illegal activities, like they are doing uh, drugs or something. So that's typical for uh, images and people on images. So those are typical uh, rules that you have here. But the bottom line is what I'm trying to show you here is that if you are Canva creator, you can only upload stuff that you own, that you created and you have full rights of. So in this case, I just ported randomly elements inside this page. Right click right now, right click, this is what you can do. Right click anywhere on the gray area around your page and click search images with Google. Click on this and now select any of the images and I'm going to do this one. And of course, I'm using Chrome here. So this is all in Chrome. And what do I see here? This is a USB clip art from public domain. Let's click on this re search result. Public domain clip art image. Let's click on this. So this is a public domain image uploaded 2014 or even earlier. But latest is 2014. And it is uploaded by creator Rigel, whatever the name is. So if we go back to Canva and click on this and click on info, we see that this is a pro element in Canva. You uh, let me let me show you mm, Pixabay. Pixabay. I'm going to find uh, Pixabay. Is it Pixabay? Yeah, it is Pixabay. I'm going to find them. Uh, this graphics is this from pixabay yes okay so you see here this is a pixabay store so pixabay has a store on canva and everything that you can find on a pixabay you can also find it here but you see the trick here all these images are public domain but they are uploaded as free you see there is no crown here if you see a crown in the corner that indicates it is a pro element it is not a pro element so all of this is public domain and it is free this is a public domain image public domain image but it is uploaded by somebody who is not artist is not the creator of this image and it is uploaded as pro image so let's check something else. Let's, okay, let's uh, right click and what else? Search images with Google. Let's see this bunch of hearts here. What are we going to get? So another situation here. We have raw pixel. Let's see the result. Here it is. You see public domain, public domain, public domain, public domain image. And it is in Canva library in Canva library as, let's see it here, as a pro element. You see, all of these images that you see here are actually in public domain by different artists. And this one, I identified this one among the first images because this one, find image source, comes from Wikipedia. Yes, so this image this SVG vector is actually from Wikipedia. It's a public domain image. So what that means is two options. Either this Canva creator, all these Canva creators are scamming the system by uploading images from other artists, either public domain or who knows from what uh, source into Canva system as their own. And this is illegal. Of course, this directly violates Canva rules. Or, so I'm going to give you some leverage here. Canva asked these people to collect public domain images and upload them to their Canva store. So this was maybe possibly done by Canva's 
permission. And the reason why I'm thinking it's not done with Canva permission is if it's done with Canva request, then all these images that are in public domain, so all these images that are in public domain, they can only be uploaded, you see here, so free public domain image. They can only be uploaded into Canva as free, not pro. Pro elements are very restricted. You cannot upload pro elements that you do not own. Pixabay is allowed to upload uh, public domain images, but they uploaded their library here. Everything that you have on Pixabay, you will find here. But all the elements are free. You see, everything here is free. So it's a public domain vector that you can find on Pixabay. You can go to Pixabay, download it from Pixabay, and import it into Canva. The same, exactly, you have exactly the same identical rights of usage if you take it from here or take it from there, because it is a public domain image. Now, this is only valid for this creator. I'm calling it creator, but it is actually company behind this store. It is a Pixabay. Of course, if some artists would like to promote their work and they upload some free elements inside Canva, they are not public domain. So just because some images are free in Canva, that doesn't automatically mean they are public domain. Some images, like Pixabay in this case, they are public domain. And for some creators, they have also public domain images, but they do not belong to them. Another question that people often Another question. People are not asking this about me. People are just annoyed by me because, I don't know, somehow I'm the magnet for all of this. And I did not, I do not spend my days uh, looking for stuff like this. So I did not look for this. What actually happened is I'm a member of Canva official Facebook group. So I'm a member of Canva official Facebook group as a normal person, individual, so nothing special. And on February 14th of this year, 2024, I saw a post by this individual. It's not important, but I saw this post. And the post states, happy the, to share that my latest Canva element collection has been approved. You can see it there. And then you have the image of her Canva Pro elements. Now, I've been in this business for almost two decades. The moment I saw this image, the moment I saw this image, I can put my head on the line and I can claim there is absolutely no way she created this horse here in the upper right corner that you see here. Now, from all these other images, maybe yes, no. But the moment I saw this horse, I knew, I knew there is a... Put my head in the guillotine. She did not create this horse. This horse does not belong to her. No, no, no way. I bet my 20 years of experience on this. So let's right click on this, search images. Let's select this horsey. And let's scroll down. And what do we know? It's a free public domain photo, of course. So this is when I started to dig deeper in all of the other images. And of course, once you find one, you find everything. So the entire store of this person is random public domain images from all over the world. So like I said, this could be done by Canva. Canva might just ask this person, oh, okay, uh, we would like to give you $5 per hour. Go on the internet, look for all the public domain images and upload them to your store. Perfectly fine. Okay, it's, if Canva, if that is what Canva is doing, Canva, have a party, whatever you want to do. But I find it really suspicious that Canva would ask for this to be done and to label the elements as pro. Free, yes. Pro, mm, uh, no, 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 no. Because images belong to public domain. So, I dig a little bit deeper, and then I found this. 
Now you have elephant number one and elephant number two. And now I can ask you for a million dollars. Can you tell me the difference between this one and this one? These two elephants. So if I click on this one and I click on I, icon info, I see this is a free element from Pixabay. So you see, this is a Canva element. Canva element. Let's click on this one. Let's see what it says I. Uploaded by Marina Art Design 10 days ago. Image. So this is my image. This is also my image. This is a screenshot. Blah, blah, blah. And when I click on this elephant, it tells me this is an image inside Canva. So this is Canva internal library graphic element. And it is free. See, I click E. It belongs to free uh, section. This elephant is exactly the same. See here. If I scroll down looking for the elephant, I will find this exactly the same graphic. And I click on this one and then click on I. And now it's a pro element uploaded by this individual. Now, what are the chances that Canva is allowing multiple creators to upload public domain images, same images, into the Canva library? So this is where I started to like increase my confidence that this was being done uh, while violating Canva rules. So why is this important? Why is any of this important if you are violating Canva rules and you don't care? Marina, I'm violating Canva rules. You already told me I cannot use this in Pro. I, I can only use free. They need to be over, blah, 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 blah. I don't care. I have my subscription. I'm paying for Canva to give me all this for free and I can sell it and I can do whatever I want with it. I can put it on my KDP books. I can put it on Etsy. Shut up, Marina. Why is this a problem? If we have people importing images that they did not create into Canva and those images are public domain and you are stealing from Canva everybody's happy everybody's happy so you have this woman is stealing from public domain and scamming Canva you are scamming Canva so the only one that is being hurt is Canva because every time you use this image Canva has to pay this person because this is uploaded as pro element. So the only, like I said, the only one that is getting hurt here is Canva. You are okay because you are stealing from Canva, but the image is already illegally in Canva. So it's not an issue. But what if, now pay attention here. What if this creator uploaded image from public domain but originally, this image was uploaded illegally into public domain. It doesn't belong to public domain. So in case of this llama here, we see here that it is an image in Pixabay, but it is not. You see, when you click on it, it doesn't give you public domain, blah, 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 blah. It gives you a nice little info by the artist Marta Simon, my Pixabay designs have commercial use, blah, 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 blah. You cannot sell, blah, 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 blah. So she's an artist. She drew this. She gave this illustration to Pixabay, but most definitely she didn't give it as a public domain. But because this person found it on Pixabay, presumed it's a public domain, and who's going to know? Who's going to know? Nobody's going to know. And then you go to Canva and you, oh, I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to steal from Canva. Look at me. I'm making my fancy KDP notebook. Who's going to find out? Who's going to care? And now you make your notebook. This is your notebook. Notebook. Because you are good at spelling. No llama drama for you. So you are using Canva element. And in your head, you're thinking, this is Canva. The only section where I can have problem is Canva. So if Canva is not suing me, if Canva is not doing anything 
when I'm stealing from Canva, when I'm violating Canva rules, when I'm using this llama as a standalone with no other elements overlapping, and I'm using a standalone element as a pattern, and this is 100% against Canva rules because this is a pro element and this is not allowed, this is not allowed, none of this is allowed usage of Canva pro elements, and especially for KDP, but you do not care because you believe the only problem you can have is with Canva. But in this case, it's not Canva. The artist, so this Marta person, she can see your book on KDP and blah, 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 la de -la -da -da, a report, nice little report, because she didn't upload this for you to use in KDP, especially not a standalone, not like this. She uploaded this into Pixabay for you to use this as per Canva rules. And if this is her element and it is uploaded as her element in Canva as pro element by her, so by her, you cannot use it like this. But you found it and you are using it and you are using it because another person uploaded into Canva, uh, thinking it is a public domain image from Pixabay. So this is the problem that we are facing. One of the problems you are facing. So you do not know, is this image, this image actually legally uploaded into Canva? So that's your problem, not number one, 95. And that's just the beginning. The next thing that you also need to try to understand is this is a pro image. You see, uh, it's not a separate element. It's a pro image. This is a pro image. This is a pro image. This is a pro image. What you see on the left and what you see on the right, they're not the same. Yes, on the paper, they're all four of these images are pro Canva images, legally uploaded by artists into Canva. But in case of the left image, the pro rules state or free element rule state that you, if you want to sell this as your own design, your design needs to be unique. Your design needs to be original. You need to be that no elements are used standalone, blah, 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 blah. In case of the left pro image, there is absolutely nothing, nothing that you can do to this image to make it unique enough, original enough, so you can sell this. This pro image here can only be used as a private thing. You print this out and you give it to your daughter to color it. That's it. Okay. Imagine you draw this. You are an artist, you drew this. And I come along. Boom, original design. I'm going to upload this to Etsy and give me money, people. <laughs> I mean, there is nothing. I don't care how many eggs I put to cover this. There is nothing I can do this image to make it unique, original enough as per Canva rules. So once you see these images inside Canva, specific images like this one here, there is nothing that you can do to this image to make it unique, original, because it's, it's already complex image. It's already a scene. So in this case, yes, it's a pro image, but no, you cannot use it as other pro images. So let's say this one and let's make this one bigger. And then I put the egg here. Okay. So this is now composition made out of multiple elements. Uh, this is not covered. This is a little bit covered here. The carrot is covered. So maybe I can call this uh, unique. It is unique, but is it original enough? Is it original enough? Did I change this element so much that I can call this an original design? So that's the problem. And that is what I'm going to show you later on in the video, not now. Let's continue. This is another pro image, Canva pro image. So this is a scene. Do you think that by adding these numbers here, you have changed this image so much that this now is original unique design? And there is no amount of freaking flowers you can paste on top of this and say, look, mom, this is mine now. 
I don't care how many flowers you stick on this. It's not going to become unique original design. And the problem is the original image is too complex. So, what can you do? The reason why I said anything in the first place is because the person that uh, just started to sell on Etsy, so this was just a couple of first images, first products on Etsy, I was trying to be helpful. I, would tr I was trying to say, okay, if this is what you doing, if this is what you are selling, if this is your entire concept, okay, in this case, why use something that is not allowed to be used like this? I mean, there's nothing like so wonderful in this image that you must, must use this image. You can easily create this image by using standalone free elements in public domain, or if worse comes to end, you can, let me just copy this. Let's go to, uh, where is AI Dali? Let's use AI generate. So mushroom house fairy tale coloring page. Of course, it's not going to give me a beautiful image because the prompt is very short, but you can play around a couple of minutes, maybe 10, 20 minutes, search on internet for a good prompt, ask people to give you a good prompt, and then you will get something like this. Now, I, I agree with you, this is not perfect because the prompt is rubbish. But you can get this and you can do whatever you want with this. You can sell this. You can put this on top. Where is it? Position forward. And make it unique. And by doing so, yes, you spend a couple of minutes extra. But now you are building your Etsy store to have a future. If at any point, at any point, this person decides that she wants to remove this image from Canva. If at any point she finds out this is being sold on Etsy, like this, with nothing, zero, no changes whatsoever. She can take down. And if you get a couple of takedowns, you lose your Etsy store. Now, in my head, my opinion was at that time, here, this is the truth. Please listen to this truth and change and adapt to have your Etsy store safe. But... No, I'm not go even going to go there to tell you what happened there. It's it's a mess. It's a, such a mess that I even have a lawyer involved. Yes, because I'm not going to... Okay, I understand that you don't want to know the truth. I accept that you don't want to know the truth, but you cannot call me a liar. You can do whatever you want, but you cannot call me a liar. Not when I have evidence. Sorry, not... Uh, sorry. I know you don't like to know that there's a piss on your sandwich and I'm sorry that I told you maybe that was out of line you got hurt but it is what it is and that's the end of the original part of the video that I was planning to publish the next part of the video is requested so I already explained everything that I'm going to share now uh, in my past videos. But this is YouTube. People are asking for stuff to be repeated over and over and over again. So here it goes. If you know and if you understand the actual Canva rules, counting that all the images that you use are actually legally uploaded to Canva, if you know all the rules about that and how, to, how you can use free and pro elements in your commercial projects, you can just stop and quit the video. But if you want to know more about uh, how you can use free and pro elements in Canva, you can continue watching because that is what I'm going to explain now. In order to understand what we have inside Canva, we first need to take a look on what kind of accounts you can have in Canva. You can have free account, you can have pro account, you can have edu account, educational account. Now, the difference between Pro and Edu is that Edu is, of course, free, but it's supposed to be only available for educators. So everything that you have in Pro, you have in Edu, but Edu is free, Pro is paid, free is free, and free is restricted. So you have, you in free and Pro, you have commercial usage allowed. 
in edu commercial usage is not allowed and in free you have restrictions in pro you have no restrictions whatsoever but on etsy and all over the internet you will find offers to get cheap lifetime pro accounts and they are actually edu somebody created an account with uh, united states universities and some universities they do not have any scanning or checking system so anyone can apply for edu uh, email and once they have this educational email they start canva account and once they have canva account educational account they can add you as their students so once they are adding you once the teacher starts adding students inside it doesn't matter so the students do not need to have educational account only the teacher needs to have educational email account so what you see here on Etsy, on eBay, on all over the place, when they say Canva Pro Lifetime for $2, $3, $1, uh, buy a banana and get Canva Pro free. All of this is actually they are selling you edu. And you cannot use educational uh, account on Canva for commercial usages. But they are doing it. Everybody is doing it. I'm sure if you throw a rock... 100 meters around you you will hit one person that is using canva edu account illegally what are the risks of using uh, the fake edu account it can be closed at any time without warning and if that happens you will lose access to all your designs permanently that's it you cannot recover your designs and if you are selling template links all those links that you have in your stores across the board will stop working now, to me, this is absolutely ridiculous that people are even doing this because it is very easy to get real, legal, pro account cheap. And that is to get five people to join into team and purchase a package during the discount sale. Now, that can go to three, two dollars per month for Canva Pro. And you pay, pay upfront for a year. So that is what I have. I paid, I don't know, maybe 30 dollars or something. I paid more because I have uh, taxes in my uh, region, but it was $30 for a year. And now every year that I'm extending this pro subscription, I'm going to pay 30 years. So that's 30 per year. That's nothing. And I'm completely legal now. Everything that is according to Canva rules, I can do it because I have a pro account. My account is not edu. Now, what are Canva rules when it comes to pro elements and free elements? Before you start, ah, this is not true, this is not true. I have emails, I have screenshots, I have evidence for this coming directly from Canva. So this here is not coming from my head, this is from Canva. Pro elements can be used in designs that is only sold as Canva template link. You cannot sell them as part of the PDF, PNG, JPEG, or anything else. When it comes to free elements, they can be used in original unique design, and then they can be sold as PDF, PNG, JPEG, but element cannot be standalone, and you cannot do it with minimal changes. And plus, there are lots of other restrictions. And unfortunately, and this is the reason why a lot of people have problems with uh, usage of Canva and why every day in Canva official Facebook group we have one or two or ten people asking can I do this is this allowed what can I do with Canva is Canva is sharing text so this is this is taken from Canva license agreement you can do whatever you want with the photos fonts and graphics as long as you comply with our license blah 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 and then your product needs to be original design how do you know your design is original and then blah 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 text 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 so this is a multi-million dollar design company and in order to explain the rules of visual usage of their visual elements they are not providing any visual uh, example is just text 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 blah 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 digital clip art Martina wants to sell digital clip art using Canva. This is not allowed. What's not allowed? Show me an example. And sadly, sadly, 
throughout the entire Canva website. This is the only visual example how you can use Canva content in your design. This image here, this section here, that's it. Multi-million dollars graphic design company. This is the only visual example they can present to you. Now, fortunately for us, there is another company that is uh, selling or authoring designers to upload and sell their clip arts and illustrations and photos and everything and that company is called design bundles that what they did right is they provided visual examples and visual examples are not this you have thousands of elements here thousands of elements here and this is what you choose to show how uh, your system can be used no so let me show you using the information from the license rules of design bundles because the rules of how you can use design bundles elements and graphics and clip arts is almost identical to Canva rules. So whatever I'm going to show you here, you can treat this as if this is coming from Canva. This is actually a visual representation of textual Canva license rules. So here we have a collection of three elements. So that would be this one here. You see, three elements, three elements. You cannot use them as standalone. So this is the meaning of the rule. You cannot use them as standalone. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. So you just added a couple of more elements from three element section. This is not allowed. This is now allowed. This is your design that you can sell. But let's dissect this design here. You used this image from three elements. You changed the color of the element and you added another set of elements on top like glasses and flowers. And this is important. This is what a lot of YouTube tutorials fail to mention. This image here that you put on top and now the original image is no longer standalone. This image cannot be Canva element. It needs to be your imported illustration, not just another Canva element, unless, unless it is a part of public domain. So if this is a Canva free element, this needs to be either your element or public domain element. And now this design is unique, original enough to be sold. Let's continue. This is a composition of a design on Canva. Of course, you cannot sell it as is. I believe that is clear. What you also cannot do is move it around, shift it around, change the font a little bit, make some small adjustment and sell it as your own design. So here and here, this is not original enough. This is not unique enough. Let's go to another image. This is the original Canva template or design or concept. You see you used the rays here. You used Sunny from the original design and everything else is completely different. And this is where I want you to take a deep breath, maybe pause the video and stare at these two images side by side. This is what Canva means when they say your design needs to be unique, needs to be original. This is what you have in Canva and this is your output. This is what you need to produce. Do you see how different these two, these two things are? This is completely different. It originated from this, it originated from this, but this is completely different design. Two days ago, I saw a new YouTube video showing you how you can do take this, an SVG image, download it, convert it to photo frame, upload it back to Canva and use it as a photo frame. Absolutely not allowed. You cannot do that. You cannot download any images from Canva as SVG. Now, if you cannot download any images from Canva as SVG, why on earth Canva is giving you an option to download as SVG? The reason why Canva is giving you that option is what if I start with a blank page? So I have a blank page in front of me 
and I upload into Canva my own SVG art. And I do my designing thing in Canva. And then I'm finished. I want to be able to download that back as SVG, not PNG or something uh, less of less quality. So that is why you have the option to download images from Canva as SVG. It is not so you can download Canva images. It is so you can download your own images that you imported into Canva as SVG. So this is not allowed. This is not allowed. If this is from Canva, you cannot just turn it into a photo frame and slap some pattern or texture inside. You also cannot do this. You cannot put mandala inside for coloring. So this is the, exactly what that video was showing. And I commented on that video that their entire video is actually showing how to violate Canva rules. And this is an example of what is allowed. If this is a free image in Canva, this is something what you can do. You can slice it up, you can fill it with pattern, and now this is unique, original, enough design from this to this that you can actually sell it on any market you want. Let's continue. We have these icons. Of course, this is not allowed, and you cannot use this as a logo. You cannot use clip art from Canva as logo and you cannot trademark it because you do not have copyright over this because not even Canva has copyright over these images. Now this you can use and you can use this as a logo for your local business. But if in the future you want to actually register your business and trademark the logo, you cannot trademark this. You can use this. You changed it enough according to Canva rules, but you cannot register this as your logo. And same as this one, in this case, you moderated the elements in such way that the original element cannot be extracted from your design. Patterns. Of course, if you have a Canva pattern, you cannot use it as is. If this is the original pattern, you cannot extract one singular element or multiple elements and just shift them around. And this is your pattern. So this to this not allowed. And this is another image where you need to take a deep breath to understand the, uh, the range of changes that you need to do in order to have unique and original design. This is a pattern that you have in Canva. This is what you need to do to it in order for it to be unique and original. You have to change all the elements. You need to combine them with other elements that are not part of the original pattern. They can be yours or they can be from public domain. And this now is okay for you to sell. So do you see the complexity of the changes that you must perform between this and this in order for you to use Canva legally in commercial projects? We have water, color, illustrations. Of course, this is not allowed. This is allowed because you cropped the original illustration and now the original illustration cannot be extracted from this. Same here. There is original illustration here, so this purple, this one here. But you remove the bottom, you put the text on top of it so it cannot be extracted from the image. So this is allowed. This is allowed. When it comes to patterns like this, that are actually digital papers, you can do this, you can do this, so one way or the other, as long as you are not selling them like this. So you see the whole, you just added this text on top, but the original pattern can still be extracted. The original uh, texture can be uh, extracted from your image. What about fonts? Now, free fonts, you can do whatever you want with free fonts. But pro fonts, you cannot just type all the letters and sell it like this. So this is not allowed. Also, for pro fonts, you cannot download them and convert them into photo frames and then fill them with patterns. So that's also not allowed. And this is an example of what you can do 
if you are, of course, I'm talking about designing something, creating an image. I'm not talking about actual typing the text. So this is the design that you can do with the pro font or with the pro uh, letter. So it's an image of a letter. It's not an actual typable font. So this is how the letter looks like. And this is the amount of changes that you need to do to this in order to be able to sell it. I hope this was clear. I hope I explained everything. If you have more questions, ask me down below, but you can go back and watch this video step by step. Uh, you can also go to the design bundles uh, license and check everything there. It is explained. It's basically the same images I've shown you here. And I believe this explains quite good. And I do not understand, literally, I do not understand why Canva cannot do this. Why Canva cannot provide us with this. It's easy. Just do it. Show us this is not allowed. This is sample of allowed. It's simple. And I'm not sure why Canva is not doing this. Another, but let's continue. Another question that was asked is, is selling public domain images even legal? Yes, it is. If you want to look into uh, selling of public domain images and photos, you can also check the situation that uh, Getty Images had with uh, Carol Highsmith, photographer. So what she did is she donated catalog of her works to uh, Library of Congress as public domain images, but then Getty Images took those photos and started to charge $500 for them. And then she got a notice that she needs to pay for using of their photos, but it's her photos originally. So if you go to Getty Images, you will find a lot of free public domain photos that they are selling for $500 or more. And it is allowed. You cannot, once your image goes into public domain, you cannot take it out from the public domain. And once it is in public domain, it's basically free. Everybody can do whatever they want with that image, except claim copyright. So no one can claim copyright over the images that you draw, you created, uh, the photos you took. Once you place them in public domain, they can do whatever they want, except claiming that they created it. You remain a copyright owner of those images. And uh, yeah, I believe I answered all your questions. If you have more questions, ask me down below. One more question that was asked is how much money did I make uh, with my Canva elements and how much money can you make as a Canva creator? Now, if you upload images from all over the internet, public domain images that you did not draw, of course, you can stuff 1000 images every day inside Canva, but if you're actually drawing them, creating them, uh, typing in the metadata and following all the guidance guidelines that Canva is asking, it's going to take you a long time. Uh, I did not uh, fill my Canva store that much. Like I said, I just uploaded things that I needed and they were not available in Canva, so I just skipped the middleman and I upload them into my Canva store. But with the long drum rolls, choo, 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 this is how much I made with my uh, Canva elements lifetime. So this is these are my lifetime earnings in Canva. Before I end this video, I want to also say something that if if what I said in this video is wrong about this person or any other mentioned artist and the images I've shown on my uh, pages here on my slides in Canva and they uploaded public domain images or images created by other artists to their Canva stores as their own. If they somehow got permission to do this by Canva, I would like to apologize. When I'm wrong, I say I'm wrong. So in case the people artists, the images I've shown in this video. So I'm talking about those uh, public uh, domain images I mentioned at the beginning that are uploaded to Canva as pro. If this was done by Canva permission, if this was done with Canva approval, then I apologize. I apologize. 
as you can see here, I asked this person that posted her uh, clip art, um, public domain clip art. I asked her, did she get permission from Canva to upload public domain vectors? And I also tagged both of the admins in that group that are officially employed by Canva so they can share info about this. And I shared, of course, the image of two identical images inside Canva uh, graphic library. So this left section here. And I shared the elephant, two identical images. One is free, one is pro. What is happening here? Can they share their opinion? Once I have more info, I will probably post it and pin the comment down below in the description of this video. No, 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 the comments of this video. Sorry. And yeah, uh, I have another video coming up and it's going to be how you can make 100 or more dollars a day using Etsy and Creative Fabrica. If you have no skills, no brain, nothing, you are like your IQ is negative. Can you make $100, $100 or more per day on Etsy with Creative Fabrica easily? The answer is yes, of course. And, um, and no, it's not a good thing. Again, it's a piss on your sandwich kind of video. And yeah, that's going to be my next video most likely. And most probably, a lot of people are not going to like it. I informed Creative Fabrica that I'm going to make that video. I informed Design Bundles I'm going to make that video. And I informed Etsy I'm going to do that video because they all, all know about this. They all received my reports and reports by other designers who have uh, gotten their bundles and art stolen and sell, being sold on Etsy. And for past six, eight months, nothing has been done. So there is a very nice, simple procedure that you can do to make easy money very fast. It's not like, okay, if I do this, maybe I'm going to get some sales. You will get sales for sure. You can make a couple of thousands of dollars very easily in very short period of month. And then you can continue making of thousands of dollars every month until Creative Fabrica or Canva or Design Bundles uh, get their uh, legal team involved into that. So that is going to be in my next video. Happy days. And uh, yeah, that's it. Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Goodbye. And uh, don't eat sandwiches that you did not make.